the more you dig into Disney's history, the more you dig into Disney's past, the more you understand how they build the future. What a great place to start telling the stories of oddities than with the first ever oddity of Disneyland. The first time they almost made some new Disneyland, but they didn't because maybe, maybe it was too odd. Disney, as you know, has a rich 65 year history. And in that history of 65 years, so many amazing things have come and gone. But today we're starting a new series where we look at the oddities of Disneyland. These are the weird, bizarre little moments that a rumor of a rumor told you about. We're going to dig in and see what we can find out about some of the oddities, some of the things that slip between the cracks of time over at Disneyland. You ready to look at our first oddity? I bet you are. So if you've ever been over into DCA and you've been walking down the street and you've come across Trolley Treats, the candy shop, right? It's on the other side of the Starbucks. You may have stopped and looked in the window and wondered to yourself, what am I looking at? Where did this come from? This window that has a mountain full of candy in it. There has to be a backstory because we know everything at Disneyland has a backstory. It's all connected. Nothing's by random. Everything somehow pulls together on the thread that is Disneyland. So today we're going to look at, as a Disneyland oddity, what was originally going to be the first ever expansion of Disneyland, Rock Candy Mountain. So imagine going into Fantasyland, going through Sleeping Beauty's castle, working your way around King Arthur's carousel, and then in the background, not seeing Casey Jr., not seeing the storybook land canal boats, but seeing a giant mountain made out of candy. Now, not actual candy because actual candy would be a, a health hazard. So Rock Candy Mountain would be a mountain made full of candy, chocolate, gumdrops, marshmallows, and more. Waterfalls. Well, not a waterfall if it's a candy waterfall, but imagine waterfalls of chocolate pouring over the side of a mountain. How could you resist? This was going to be the first ever expansion of the park because as you know, when Casey Jr. and the Storybook Land boats opened up, they didn't have any sort of real landscaping around them. The little miniature buildings hadn't been put in yet. It was a pretty vacant part of the park. So the idea was we could put in Rock Candy Mountain. Let's explore the one and only concept art that exists and see what this Disneyland oddity would have been like if it actually would have been built. Looking at the concept art done by Claude Coates, famous Disney Imagineer. And as we look into the mountain, there's lots of little details for us to explore. Love, love exploring Disneyland concept art, especially for the things that we never got. So we can see the Casey Jr. platform. Imagine walking up to the path on the edge of a mountain to ride Casey Jr. I love that the sign has been made out of lollipops. And it has a nice little like canopy that would be below us. Over to the right, we see a friendly water tower that's going to fill our steam engine back up with water. Fun fact, not really a steam engine, but hey, it's Disneyland. It's not real candy on the mountain. We can see a orange waterfall, a pink waterfall. How would they do colored waterfalls? How would they have pulled this off? Would they actually be flowing dyed water in their own separate isolated pools? Would it just be a sculpture of a waterfall? That's not good enough. It would have to be a flowing self-contained pile of water, bucket of water, big, big bucket of water dyed the color of its fall. As you can see, Casey Jr., when we would load into it from this awesome platform adorned with lollipops, we would go through a tunnel and begin our journey around Rock Candy Mountain. So as you can see, it was Pretty enormous in its scale. I mean, we're counting now one, two, three levels of train tracks going up into the sky. Trains don't handle steep inclines. So these would have been a nice gradual grade to work our way up a mountain. But we're looking at at least four to five stories to make the height of the train. Casey Jr. would go around the outside of the mountain where you'd get to admire all of the candy that makes up the Rock Mountain. Now, Walt's original idea is he wanted the mountain itself to be built out of rock candy, crystal rock candy. So it would look kind of clear, kind of transparent, but ultimately they decide that would be next to impossible to clean. But I do love that all ideas eventually get recycled. 
So when I think of a mountain that has what looks like rock candy on the outside of it, clear, hard, sculpted rock candy, certain movie by the name of Frozen comes to mind. We can see over here to the left that we have a candy cane bridge that would probably be the incline that would take us up Rock Candy Mountain. And then we would slowly work our way back down the, the circular tracks, enjoying everything around us. But just look at this mountain. Look, we see candy canes, circular candies, popsicles, but we still see over in the bottom left, we can still see a railroad crossing sign. And then I can't figure out what that candy is. It's the very tip of the mountain. Almost looks like a looks like a birthday cake candle. And if you look below it, it looks like it's sitting on a pile of vanilla icing. Give me that frosting. Now I'm liking the idea of there being pools of dyed water. Because as you can see, there's multiple layers in succession of the magenta water. Next to that to the left, there's multiple uh, waterfalls of the orange water. And then the final one, we see a sort of a light pink layer of waterfalls. So I'd imagine that this water would go down the mountain in different waterfalls, gather somewhere in, in the bottom, and then be pumped back up to the top of the mountain to do the trick all over again. That would have been so amazing to ride on Casey Jr. around all of these dyed water fountains. As well as if you look over on the left, there seems to be a pile, like a big pile of gold candies. And then if you look in the middle of this illustration, you can see when the train is actually gonna go over the top, there's like a candy cane bridge again, that's gonna take us over the top of what looks to be a valley, a valley of hard candy below us. There's the candy cane bridge that I believe would take us up to the top of the mountain so we can start our descent back down. You can see on the uh, middle tier there, there is a railroad crossing sign. So there would still be things that would make us feel like we're on a railroad. We can also see lots of lollipops popped all around it. And I love the different piles of candy as well as the mountain itself. Would it be sculpted to look like actual rock candy? That would be fascinating, fascinating. My favorite part of how a rock candy mountain would have been used is this. Imagine getting into your canal boat and slowly drifting into a tunnel. Now, what's on the other side of that tunnel, you say? Glad you asked. We're working our way to Emerald City because the storyline was, as we enter Rock Candy Mountain, we're gonna work our way to Oz, where Dorothy is going to see all of her friends and enjoy her birthday party in Oz. Imagine the different vignettes that we would have floated past to work our way to this birthday party celebration. And if this would have been built and if it was still there today, that would be three birthday parties that we could celebrate in Disneyland. Alice, Pooh, and the OG of the birthday, Dorothy. Let's drift through as we make our way to Dorothy's birthday celebration. Take me there. This right here is the three levels of Disney storytelling. As you see, we have the tapestry of trees all around us. So those would be very close to our boat. Then the next level would be the fountain that we're floating around. And then off to the distance, the promise of working our way to Oz. Now what's interesting about this, aside from everything, Disney had just purchased the right to the Oz books. He was working on a movie called The Rainbow Road to Oz. As Walt was looking at expanding the park, he was already thinking three steps ahead. As you know, when Disneyland was built in 1955, Sleeping Beauty hadn't been released yet, but Cinderella had. People would have expected him to build Cinderella's castle in the heart of his new park because that's the castle that everybody knew. Walt, being a profound promoter, knew that putting Sleeping Beauty's castle in the park would help promote the film, that he was spending a lot of money and a lot of time on, so he wanted to use Disneyland to promote a future project. So he wanted to use the interior of Rock Candy Mountain to promote The Rainbow Road to Oz, which was a movie that he wanted to work on to keep telling the story of Wizard of Oz. Now there's very, very little concept art from this. I was only able to find these four pieces of concept art, but I believe what we're looking at here 
if we start over on the right, that looks like we would see a, a castle that we would work our way over to. The middle one, I believe, is showing that we would work our way through a forest to get to there. And then eventually, over on the far left, we would end up at the birthday celebration. And this is what that room may have looked like. So imagine we're inside a mountain of candy with the train running around the outside and we just float past a celebration of Dorothy and all of her friends that we've come to love from the Wizard of Oz celebrating her birthday. An unbelievable concept. So if you look over on the far right of the monitor here in the studio, you can see what this castle would have become. Man, that would have been so amazing to have that in there. For sure, in my opinion, as far as this part of the attraction goes, an upgrade for this part of the park. I mean, there's no doubt about floating inside of a mountain, getting to see all these different set pieces. That would have been an upgrade to what we actually got. This would have been where Casey Jr. and the Storybook Canal Boats are. When the park opened in 55, they didn't have any real storytelling to them. This was going to be the first ever expansion of Disneyland. They were going to build this mountain, run Casey Jr. around the outskirts, and put the Storybook Canal Boats through the center of it. And then tell us the story of the Rainbow Road to Oz. Woo. Sign me up. When we look at the details of this castle that would have been built in one of the show scenes, that reminds me a lot of what the towers look like during the anniversary when they put the diamond on top. I'm telling you, the more you dig into Disney's history, the more you dig into Disney's past, the more you understand how they build the future. Allegedly, they had made, I believe, like 30 different models of what this would look like. I looked everywhere, everywhere to find these models, could only find one. And when you're looking for a deep dive on Disney history, there's only one man you trust, Jim Hill. Jim Hill somehow had this image. Look at this model for the attraction. Now, I don't know this for sure, but let's imagine what could that semicircle of space, what could that have been for us? Could that have been where we would literally have floated past the celebration? Or would that area be where there would be figurines telling us more story? I would have loved to think that we would be floating past all of this. That would have been my preference for sure. You can see once again, there's your three levels of storytelling. In the very edge of where I think our boat would have floated past, you would have items out on this walkway. So those items would be the things that are right next to you. Then in that middle layer, where is actually where the story is always happening, you can see what looks to be, you know, people coming and going and having a good time. And then the final layer on the outside of that beautiful uh, fence that's sort of going around the outside. Then you see the silhouettes telling us that there's even more happening out on the outskirts. It also looks like there may be a hot air balloon floating around. And then over on the far left, it does look like that there is a character in some sort of, is it, are they in a hot air balloon box? What are they, what are they floating in over there? But just imagine being in a boat inside of this mountain and floating around this big show scene. Take me there. And of course, if you're going to build a Disneyland dark ride, you got to have figures. So here are a couple sculpts of how they were imagining making a more animated version of the Wicked Witch of the West and the Cowardly Lion. You can see that it has all of those vibes of the 50s, a friendlier version. They did concept art. They built models. But Walt was the type of guy, from what I understand, if he had a big idea, he wouldn't take no for an answer and you kind of had to show him, show him the idea so that he could understand why it was amazing and you should keep proceeding with it or why the idea was bad and you should back off of the idea. So his original idea is he wanted the mountain to be made out of transparent rock candy. Well, ultimately they decided that that would be impossible to keep clean because if it was basically a hard acrylic plastic, they would have to clean it all the time and to put all the proper cuts and curves into it, it would just be a mess. As you know, Southern California 
We don't have rain, we don't have snow, but we have more sunlight than you can shake a stick at. And the sun would have probably, probably faded it out, probably made it look, if it was transparent, probably would have created like a cloudy finish to it. So ultimately they decided that doing a transparent sort of frozen like mountain just wasn't going to work. So when they shifted their attention, they decided to build a model out of it. Now they did something that I have a theory on. This is just, just, just my working theory, because as you know, I come from the world of art. I was a illustrator for the Wonderground gallery. I've made a lot of art in my life, which also means I've worked with a lot of clients in my life. So sometimes when your client has what you think isn't a great idea, you will work hard to show your client how their idea is flawed to maybe, just maybe, get that project canceled. So here you see Imagineers working on the model. Important fact, they're working on the model in a warehouse, an outdoor warehouse, putting it all together. I zoomed up and sort of messed with the transparency as best as I could. This is close to the version that we would have got. You can see the rock work, you can see the, the candy waterfall coming down there. But here you can see that they're actually building the model for Walt out of actual candy, using real candy. They didn't make plastic molds of candy and build the mountain. They just went and bought real candy to build the mountain. This is another version of what this could look like. And in this version, you see the theorized various dyed waterfalls that would collect in their own different pools. Down in the bottom left, you can see the lollipop area where Casey Jr. would load in. And you see the track going around the mountain. Is it just me or does this feel like a dress rehearsal for Matterhorn? They built this small scale model. And I kid you not, this is, this is the story. They put licorice on it, gumdrops, candy canes, and fudge but they were building it in their warehouse. And as the heat started to build in a non air conditioned warehouse, the model, the model started to melt. And when they showed it to Walt, he's like, nah, it's... thanks for trying guys. Doesn't work the way that I thought it would. So they took the model and they just pushed it out of the warehouse. And I kid you not, it was eaten by scavenging birds that gathered all around it and ate the model. <laughs> so the model for Rock Candy Mountain, which was going to be the first ever expansion in the history of the Disney parks, eventually was just eaten by birds. Now, as I like to point out, everything in Disneyland goes full circle. So birds eating something that was supposed to be built in Fantasyland only plays into the fact that every night for some reason in Fantasyland, all the blackbirds come in. It all comes together, folks. But when this wouldn't work out, the Disney Imagineers would take this idea and move over to something that was more sensible, Matterhorn. And if you think about the idea of a big candy mountain being behind Sleeping Beauty's castle, even though the Wizard of Oz part would have been amazing, I think getting Matterhorn is exactly how this whole creative problem need to work out. Sometimes you have to show your clients, as an artist, even an art director as good as Walt Disney, sometimes you have to show them where their idea is good and how as an artist you can improve their idea to make it even better. So here is a horrible version that was built for D23 at some point. Um, this looks like junk. Just my opinion, whoever built it, thank you for your service but this is not what I would want put in Fantasyland. And you can see they literally once again went back to the template, just bought real candy and stuck it in the side of the mountain. But everything in Disneyland as we know is a callback from something else. Nothing is random. Nothing is, is not planned, isn't part of a larger bit of storytelling. One of the things that made me fall in love with Disneyland was the idea that the more I would study it, the more I would realize everything's connected. So even these oddities, things that were never built, they still are a part of the history and the history must always be celebrated. So when 
the entryway of Disney's California Adventure would be redesigned into Buena Vista Street, which is the street that Walt Disney Studio sits on in Burbank, they would go down the street and make sure that all of its shops were by the same style guide of Main Street USA, where every name, every detail would somehow be a callback to the rich history that is Disneyland. So when Trolley Treats was built, the candy shop that's there on the corner attached to where the Starbucks is when you eventually take a ride over by the fountain, Trolley Treats was the perfect way to bring back the idea of Big Rock Candy Mountain. Taffy, lollipops, chocolate, chocolate milk waterfall, a rock candy can cake, sprinkles, lollipop popsicle sticks, cotton candy, frosting, and a gingerbread train station. Sign me up for a gingerbread train station. A, a rough illustration of showing how they would build Rock Candy Mountain inside of trolley treats. And this is what it looks like today. Today, when you walk up to the front of the storefront, you can see this mountain that actually has a little train that goes around it, but to keep it on brand, and who knows, this might be a call back to things we don't have anymore when the park gets back open. It has a little red car trolley that does laps around it. But on this zoomed in photo, you can see what it would have been like to ride around on a train uh, around a landscaping that really was just an overall, just a tapestry of sweets. If they could have made the clear suckers, that would have been amazing to just basically ride on a train and then look at the world and see Sleeping Beauty's castle on the other side tinted and, and, and blown out through the lens of a red or blue or green orange lollipop. What a view that would be. But you can see they built some of the archways and tunnels that Casey Jr. would have went through. And if you look real, real close, deep inside on this little ladder that's around the rock candy part of the top, you'll find a tiny, tiny snowman wearing a set of Mickey ears, even equipped with a hidden Mickey. The next time you're going down Buena Vista Street in DCA and you come up to Trolley Candy Treats, you now know the story of Rock Candy Mountain, the first ever planned expansion for Disneyland, and the possible fate of Casey Jr. and the storybook Canal Boats. What an amazing thing this would have been, but almost something that maybe probably shouldn't have happened because Matterhorn's perfect where it's at, and what would this have looked like on the backside of Sleeping Beauty's castle? That part would have looked a little bit weird, right? If, if this was the proper height, because we're looking at something that's about five stories, if I'm reading this concept art properly, a five-story mountain or more that close to Sleeping Beauty would have created an interesting juxtaposition to where Matterhorn works because it sits to the side of her and it accompanies her, and it feels like that's a mountain inside the kingdom. But having this fictional candy mountain right behind her would have created an interesting sightline, a sightline that I don't think that I'm a fan of. But imagine standing in the small world mall, in the small world promenade, and having that beautiful Mary Blair, Rolly Crump facade behind you and then looking over at a mountain full of candy, that valley in there, that would have been the happiest valley on planet Earth. Small world behind you, big rock candy mountain on the other side, take me there, take me there. Oh, and with the Imagineers, how they love to put in the scents, imagine what this train ride, what this boat ride would have smelled like. Woo, take me there. This is a new series that I want to make that will focus on the oddities of Disneyland, all the little things that we've heard about or maybe haven't heard about, all the things that didn't happen or did happen in a very odd way. Thank you for hanging out with me and going into the past and looking at what could have been to Fantasyland and what the first expansion could have been, but we all know it went a different way and we got beautiful Matterhorn Mountain. So there you go. There's the story of Rock Candy Mountain and what almost became the first ever extension of Disneyland. A lot of people make Disney content. I'm just trying to make a, a happy flavor of it that, that, that it, people can enjoy. I appreciate you guys supporting me. That's how we'll keep doing it. That's how we'll keep doing it together. As long as you guys love me, I don't have to care that the algorithm hates me. Would you rather have this 
or what we got. Would love to know. Would love to know your opinion. Would you rather have this or what we got? Because this would have been amazing. I think the story of this would have been better. I think going into Oz would be better than going around the miniatures, even though I do love the miniatures. Big fan of, of Storybook Land. However, there's the other part of me that says that this would have been an eyesore for the rest of Fantasyland. I wonder if we had this, would we get Fantasyland 1983? Would we get the Bavarian village? I know I said that wrong. But would we have got the European style village with Rock Candy Mountain? Or would it all stayed looking more like a medieval uh, Renaissance fair? Or would you like this because this accompanying small world would just be too much magic for the heart? Could you imagine this attraction during Christmas, during the holidays? Could you imagine this attraction when they opened it up for a Halloween party? I don't know, man. I love candy and treats and things that are sweet, but this, this might have been too much of a good thing. Too much of a good thing. That was gross. I won't do that again. If this would have existed, everybody would have called me Sticky Bricky when I tried to climb the side of it. Bavarian Cream Village? I wish it was a Bavarian Cream Village. Just imagine if all of the roofs and fantasy lines were with that cream coming out.